All right, perfect. What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome to something that we actually are starting up on Mondays, and you're going to be seeing happen every single week. And we're going to be kicking it off with these two amazing guests that we have. Um, so excited to have both Corey and Twan here with us today um, to talk a little bit more about a record-breaking month that they've just had, a strategy that they've added into their business um, really, con honestly, consistently this year. And I know it's going to be something you're going to continue to keep doing. Plus, they're going to add in some tips and, so and share some insight on what they did to what was it? What was the, di like, you guys were talking numbers. I know you guys will, Andrew, you'll go into that. Kate, um, Kate, you, Kate you missed it. You but missed I did. It. I hopped in and I was like, this is a fun conversation. I wish I was a part of. Now I need to know what's going on. And I'm sure everybody else wants to know too. <laughs> yeah, no, we can't, we can't give everything away just, just yet. But uh, Corey and Tuan shared with us earlier today, some numbers and those numbers are actually a lot higher than they shared with us this morning. So we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, but Corey and Tuan, thanks for joining us, my men. Uh, we are pumped to have you guys here and just share, you know, you guys have an incredible journey in your business and, and how it's just taken off. And this last month is another example of that. So what I'd love to actually have you guys do, if you could just start off with sharing a little bit about what you guys do, who you guys serve, and then we'll get into some of the fun stuff that we were talking about before Kate got on. Go ahead, Tuan. <laughs> All right, I'll let, you, I'll let you go first on this one, bro. <laughs> the, 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 the mic is hot. Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, me and Corey partnered up uh, back in 2021 in January. You know, we were in the leadership space uh, for a couple of years, just trying to figure things out. We were, uh, and, and what we were lacking was we didn't know how to grow a group, and then we didn't have a premium coaching offer. And so we decided, you know what? We're going to do this thing. We're going to invest heavily in just learning how to grow groups and, uh, and, and really attract the right clients. Uh, so now what we do is we serve faith-based coaches uh, in really helping them li literally start and scale their online business using a super simple Facebook group model in launching your high ticket offer. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a nutshell of like what we do. Uh, the, the, I would say the transformation in working with us is pretty much uh, for a coach to re pretty much generate consistent 10K months and hit their first six figures. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Because uh, when Twan and I, you know, we were leadership coaches struggling. It's like a lot of coaches. But uh, we, we kind of cracked the, the Facebook code. And uh, right now, our clients have generated well over $1.5 million in revenue over the last 15 months. Uh, so immensely proud of, of the work that they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I always heard this thing, Andrew, you know, I, I was, a, I was a Navy recruit at one point. And I used to watch these, I used to listen to Zig Ziglar tapes, man. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if y'all on here, y'all remember the tapes. I just put the tape inside my little tape player, go from Beaumont, Texas to Orange, Texas, about 30 mm -hmm. minute drive. And I used to hear Zig Ziglar say, if you help enough people get what they want, you have mm -hmm. everything you want. And I, I didn't really fully understand what he was saying, but, but now when I look back at our clients who's, who's saving their homes from foreclosure, we're able to go to grocery shopping. We're able to go buy buy school clothes for the kids, or even upgrade their home, upgrade their their cars, things like that. And uh, that's been the most uh, the best moments for us as we've been in this journey. But yeah, Twan and I we started off bootstrapping, and uh, you know we we got good coaches. I mean, like y'all y'all are part of that coaching tree. We got good coaches, and that that's that's been our secret. If, you know, the secret sauce to everything that we've done. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people inside this group, um, we got a, just a different, a whole different group of people here. Some people who are brand new coaches, new to being a coach, new to being that type of leader. We got some people who are doing multiple six figures, multiple seven figures. But I think everybody inside this group, at least at this point, knows exactly what Corey just said is so true, mm -hmm. is the type of people you surround yourself with, the coaching mentorship that you surround yourself with. Um, success leaves clues. And like, there isn't really many new things out there. Most stuff has kind of been done by somebody at this point. It's like so new with finding, a twist. <laughs> yeah, new, exactly. New with a twist. And exactly. It's the same thing, but with a, maybe a tweak on it. But so for you guys, you got into groups, like using Facebook groups, and that was the way you started generating leads and getting people into your world. Right. And that's kind of what started to get your business off the ground. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we had a dead Facebook group. And I mean, we we're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, just trying to figure out 
how do we get engagement? How do we just get more people just excited about our offers and just fill up the room? You know, we, we kind of went through uh, a lot of like hosting a bunch of free master classes. And I, I think we tried everything under the sun. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so once you guys got to the point where your Facebook group was starting to generate traffic for you, lead generation, what was when did you hit it? Did you hit a plateau at some point? And we're going to talk about what you guys have been doing recently that's helped you. But when did you hit a plateau in your business? Because everybody hits it. I'm curious for you guys when it was. Yeah. You're on mute, Corey. Yeah, I would say the plateau came around when we were we were just passing up six hundred thousand, uh, six or seven hundred thousand in the business, uh, because yeah, you know, it just we just needed to shift in what we were doing. So like. For our business, I mean, we were consistently growing and then all of a sudden it just came to a point where it just felt different and you just get this different vibe. Uh, and it's it's kind of like you're, you're breaking through just another barrier. And we found these barriers always happen. I mean, it happened when we were breaking through that two hundred thousand dollar barrier then the four hundred. But when we got to six um, and then uh, right about what about six fifty, we were like, OK, what do we do now? You know, do we start doing webinars again? Do, you know, you go back to all of these different things that that your brain kind of searches back for to try to find the solution. And that's that's really where we were, Andrew, when we kind of you know ran into you all. Mm. Mm-hmm. In in six 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 fifty is nothing to shake a stick. I mean, that's pretty damn good, you know. Yeah. So, but I'm just curious, what was your average kind of monthly revenue at that point? Um, average monthly revenue at that point was around, I mean, we still was, we started, uh, averaging right around 70, 70 to 80,000. So we were on a billion dollar run. Uh, it's just, um, you know, that, our first, and just bar in mind at this moment, gang, we were, I would say we still was about 10 months into the business. So like mm-hmm. it, it was still a, a toddler walking around with a big head and about to fall down. Right. Mm-hmm. So but we still, we also knew just had enough business sense to, to say, okay, hold on, we we we're hitting another plateau. So like, there's something we need to figure out to get to get past this level. I love the toddler big head. I use I always use that with Kate. I'm like, you know, doing the the, the head is kind of bobbing <laughs> around. I can't, I can't stay and you still. need somebody else to come hold it up for a second and be like, this is what it can feel yeah. like. I mean, that is a perfect analogy <laughs> for what it feels like at that point in business, right? The toddler yeah. phrase, but you know, you guys had created something that was heavy. And it was like trying to keep the thing on the tracks and keep it moving, right? Which is a very cool analogy. Um, Kate, I know you you had a couple of questions. I didn't want to wouldn't want to take them all, so jump in. Yeah, no, this was great, and I think it's important for people to know when you're watching because you know there's good, there's a mix of people inside of this group and other people who will be watching this at some point where it's like some people have businesses that have been established for a while, right? And then for some people, it's it's kind of like you guys where. I think over the last couple of years, we've seen this massive spike and spurt of of people being able to rise. But then, like you said, then you hit this level and it's like, well, do I go do something else like a new method? Do I hire a team? Like, what do I do? And so I think for you guys, it's just cool to hear your story of you were you were like kind of capped at 600. And then I know that you guys crossed the million dollar. Um, like you said, you were tracking, you hit it, which is freaking awesome. Um, and so incredibly pumped for you guys. And then I think the cool thing that you started to do is instead of going, all right, I'm going to go and do this completely separate, like promotional strategy. You started enhancing your experiences, you started attracting in more people and you started serving your people differently. You started doing it with events, which I thought was really cool. Um, and is actually a strategic move that you don't see a lot of people make. What you normally see is people hit like a 600, 700, even million dollars. Then they go and try and find all of these other ways to promote and build. And they actually then backtrack. Um, it's a really, really common thing, but you guys actually kind of skipped that. Um, continue to keep fueling your strategy. And then you started to add in another complimentary um, experience for your people. Um, So can you guys share a little bit more about your decision to do virtual events, kind of your purpose behind it, um, and then share some of the results that you've gotten. I know you did one in March, you did one in May, and or in May, you did one in March, you did one in June, and then you're going to be planning to do one again, I think um, this month, actually, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I would start off by saying, 
I think when we really started figuring out that creating virtual events was one of those, what was going to be the part of our next evolution was when we'd had these really slow months, we'd start off and it was like, it's mid month and we haven't even made a sale. And I remember just calling out to court. I'm like, bro, do we need to like change our offer? Like what the heck is going on here? And we typically just, you know, uh, have people join the Facebook group. So we use paid ads and we use organic traffic. And we were typically just running more of like, hey, you know, the typical once you join a Facebook group, answer the three questions. If you say yes, our team's going to reach out to you, right? Yeah. I got to say that method, it, it's kind of a hit and miss uh, because so many people are joining groups uh, at, a, at a high rate right now. Some people don't even know what groups they actually even joined. And what we realize is sometimes uh, even us uh, having an appointment center, we're very strategic in reaching out to them. But the response rate of these people joining the group can sometimes take a whole week. And by that time, that lead is pretty much kind of a, a very cold lead at that point. Uh, but I remember reaching out to Corey and say many times we would create events just on the fly. Mm-hmm. And we, we would create events just like within a week and we would just plan out something. And every time we launched one of those events, we generated close to six figures, if mm-hmm. not more. Mm-hmm. And then we would go back to doing the same thing again, running the same strategy. And then when we'd have a slow month, we'd get back to the drawing board and say, you know what? I think we need to host another event. And so mm-hmm. finally we said, you know what? The heck with that. <laughs> We need to probably invest in virtual events. And that's when uh, we got to partner up with uh, with with you and, and Andrew uh, just several months ago and helping us really with our live events. And you guys have been coaching us through, you know, how to really launch a successful, you know, virtual event as well. And that's been a game changer for us now. Yeah. And the real cool thing was we got a chance to sit through one of y'all live events. I think two of y'all live events that we were participants in and y'all were running the show. And I remember, you know, we were, we actually remember that stage time moment, Andrew and Kate, where y'all were coaching us, you know, Hey, y'all about to go on stage and ask us, you know, be part of a featured as a client, but we just liked how the event flow. And, you know, we did do an event in March uh, prior to having you all on, on uh, as coaches. And yeah, Tawan's right. We, we generate right around 85,000 in revenue, uh, 55, 50,000 in cash collected. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which was a pretty good event. I mean, like, because you know, if you look at it, a, that's a great month. I mean, so nothing to shake a stick at, right? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, right. at one point we couldn't even generate ten thousand dollars. So I mean, if I look back, you know, so right. few months ago, <laughs> right. and you know, we felt good about it, but we were. It was so sporadic, though. Like it really wasn't like any strategic things in there. You know, the the, the pitching strategy wasn't there. The you know how you set up the event just wasn't there. It was just more of us, like we just kind of like really going at it, and we were doing okay. OK, mm-hmm. you know, fast forward the tape. I mean, Andrew, you know, I know you asked the question, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you. So <laughs> if you go into a 35 day run, like after like once we like start the event, finish the event over the last 35 days, we've generated one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars in revenue, one hundred and seventy four thousand four hundred and forty dollars in revenue. I wrote it down mm-hmm. and one hundred and sixty four thousand four hundred and forty dollars in cash. So, like, if you look at that, I mean, like, the cash collection rate on that was so much higher because, I, you know, I, I really truly believe it was the the strategy that was given. Like, you know, Kate, we were on calls every week. What I love about y'all is, you know, um, you, you're in, you were in Cancun one time on a call. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're dedicated. And, but, but. But, you know, it's it's just one of those things we get to ask, ask questions and kind of really get our get focus on what that event is going to look like. So, like, you know, if you look at that's the power of like going from one level to the next and saying, hey, you know what? I know I can do it, but can we do it better? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And credit, so, and credit to you guys. Just, you know, obviously you guys are incredible at implementation and executing yeah. on what you learn. I mean, there's you talked about finding good mentors. You guys are incredible clients in that way. Like incredible. Yeah. Um yeah. I think what's interesting though, too, and Kate was kind of alluding at this earlier is what a lot of people make the mistake of, well, I need to come up with new offers now, like a bunch of new things I'm going to offer to people. And you guys just realize like, okay, how do I just, how do I add more value to my list to get more people trusting us to want to move forward? 
And I think, you know, obviously, like you said, like the group model still works. It obviously works. Like we were huge fans of it. Facebook group model is great, but it's been like a lot of people have been doing it. Right. So your point, like the questions don't work as good as they used to. Someone's joining 20 groups and they don't even know what they join anymore. But what's been interesting is the whole virtual events or live events, whichever ones you choose to do. I don't think, and I want to love to hear what you guys think about this. I don't think there's a better way to tip the scale of trust, mm-hmm. you know? And when you really look at what's happened over the, you know, especially around COVID and Dean Graziosi, Tony Robbins, their whole, you know, product that they had out, there's been hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people coming online to be coaches. And that's awesome. I love that. It's super exciting, but it also brings with it a lot of people who maybe aren't ready to be a coach yet going out there and actually eroding trust in the industry, if you know what I mean. So you guys go just find a way to add more value and build and just kind of tip that trust scale with those people that maybe the the old fashioned group with the calls and the setter wasn't working for them. Mm-hmm. You, do you guys feel like that's part of what led, and obviously just certain things you guys executed on, which was super cool, but do you feel like the trust scale and that, that time you spent with them was a big part of that? Oh Actually, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you look at the no like and trust factor. I mean, like, you think about why people are not buying. There's a lot of times they don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it's it's just, you know, when we have that, it was a three-day journey for us on our three-day event. Well, over that last, over that course of three days, just like you said, Andrew, we didn't change our offer. Um, we have, we have, we've been selling the same offer or having the same offer for the last 16 or 17 months now. We didn't shift the offer. What we ended up doing was, you know, I remember... Uh, sending that Google sheet over to you, Kate, and you just evaluating. And and it's just how you present that off. You know, mm-hmm. how you like structure it, how you say things, the little small details of it. What do you showcase in that offer, especially when you're doing the pitch um, inside uh, the, the couple of pitches inside the, the, the three day run. But that that was the game changer right there is is mm-hmm. is this positioning and structuring. Like the offer was already there. Like the offer made us money before, but 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 the offer was on steroids on this one. It was kind of like you know, like you you insert the rock, Dwayne Johnson, when you when you want the box office hit, right? On the movie. Right. <laughs> so, you, guys I mean, had, you guys had the rock. <laughs> <laughs> it was Kate, bro. It was Kate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. my, my muscles match. It's perfect. Yes, yeah, she's totally. Got, she got a sleeve tat. She got the whole thing going. Yeah, yep. yeah. totally resemble that. <laughs> No, that is, Kate, that is one of your superpowers is the offer. But well, that's interesting, though, Corey and Tuan, because, like, we're obviously doing a live event together next year, and we were going to do one in June, so things happened, so we didn't end up doing it. But, like, you guys already kind of were going down the path of doing virtual events, and we're kind of already moving down that path before we work together. So talk a little bit more about that offer positioning and packaging. A lot of you, you and Kate had a lot of conversations around that. Um, what what were the unique differences about the offer packaging that really helps at the event? It's it's really like, and I'll let Juan kind of share a little too. It's it's the bonuses, you know. Mm-hmm. For one, Kate, I remember the the strategy you get you you gave on that sheet. You know, it's mm-hmm. you know how I was looking at bonuses, how I was looking at at enhancers, so to speak. That was already in my offer. You were able to show, okay, like this is going to give this particular. Uh, you know, like people are looking for this type of of of, uh, of bonus, which is going to mm-hmm. give this type of deal. Like, for for instance, like if I would say I'll give 10 hours worth of content, well, then who wants to sit down and digest 10 hours worth of content versus usually saying, hey, you know what? You actually can position this. It's going to give more speed and it's going to get it's going to help them actually get a result faster. So yes. that's how, you know, and, and and that was that was a huge game changer for us, because when, when we were able to present it at, at uh, during the during during the pitches during the offer, you know it just kind of it flowed well. Now you know mm. it, it's we highlight the things that needs to be highlighted uh, because they're going to get the full breadth of the program. It's just okay. Hey, what are the things that we need to highlight to make to to actually uh, make things possible where people can say, you know what, that's going to save me time. It's going to save me heartache, uh, uh, low effort and sacrifice, and my time delay is going to be short because they're gonna they're gonna really let me uh, they're gonna really help me get to where I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so important. It's so interesting when people think about any kind of promotion and it's like you have your offer, but if you repackage your offer 
with like the four components that we talked about inside of bonus positioning, offer positioning, it's amazing what can happen for somebody to give them a cause and a need to move. Like there, did you guys have people that were like, you know, they had been around you for a while, um, weren't brand new, weren't fresh. And then all of a sudden the way that it was packaged and positioned that it was like, it was time for them. And I think it's interesting how, you know, we as business owners and marketers want the time to be immediate of like, well, can't they just buy when we want them to buy? (laughs) But it's like this understanding of we're list building, we're relationship building, and they're going to buy when they're ready. So when you have that concept and that that method of helping people make a powerful choice for themselves, because your programs are amazing. What you have to offer is amazing. And it just allows people to raise their hand and confidently say yes at that time. Did you guys have a couple of those people that were like, yes, I've been around for a while. I'm ready to move. (laughs) Good. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we we had we had so many people that uh that they and, and I think a big part of it was us being able to leverage uh, a VIP seating inside our virtual. Yes. You guys so, crush it with that. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I know it's something that you've done really really well. Yeah, we realized that people that invest into our high ticket program usually make some type of micro commitment. So for mm-hmm. us, I'll give you an example. We had a, a general seating where. It was for everybody that that wanted to just attend the, the the virtual event, and then we also created an exclusive VIP seating, which was I think it was ninety seven dollars that time we did that, and all we did was just provided more value. We 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 just you know gave away a course, we gave away Q and A sessions every single day, and we spent a lot of time with these people that paid ninety seven dollars with this. Uh, I think that first time we did that three day virtual event. What we did that really worked very well was from day one, we shared with everyone that we were going to share an exclusive brand new offer. It's only event only. And the only mm. people that would get to hear the offer were people in the VIP. Mm, very and interesting. so we yeah. didn't even share that offer with anyone that decided, you know what, $97 is not worth it for me. And mm-hmm. so we took that as, okay, you're interested in building an online coaching business, but you're not really committed because $97 if you don't see the value in this, yeah. then you won't see the value in our overall offer. So we only share that in the VIP. And I got to say, we how, how many people did we close in the VIP room, Corey? You talking about on a March one? Yep, on that March one. Uh, that first day, we collect we cash collected 50000 The second The second day was like $30,000. Mm. Yep. So like, and it was only, we only pitched the people in the VIP room. Yep. Uh, yep. So yeah. Yeah. You know, this one literally had like the way we set it up on this time, Kate, is we had clients who, you know, you always have clients who like maybe they fall off a little bit and they and then yeah. join your event. We gave them opportunity to join the event. They wanted to actually just buy at regular price. <laughs> <laughs> like they were literally beating down our doors and like, hey, can I? And I'm like, okay, this is the offer. Like you, you really have this offer, you know? <laughs> it was about to get. So, but we ended up, uh, because you know, just just kind of working it out, we try to figure out how do we give our clients a special deal and also new client revenue, uh, new clients a special deal. Well, we use your strategy and we did a client one, a complete mm. we had a client pitch, and we had a we had a regular pitch. We actually did it in the same day. Uh, Can you actually talk about that? Because that was one thing I wanted to mention. Because I think a lot of people think like. Oh, if I'm doing an event, it has to be with brand new people. It has to be like for what we, you know, would call like an acquisition event. It's like coming in to bring in new clients. But like the way that we look at it is that it can be both. And it's actually super valuable to be both. So can you guys talk a little bit more about that? Because I know that was actually a huge, huge thing for you guys this time around. Yeah. Logistically, yeah. it could be a nightmare, but <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the coaching that y'all gave. So, like, yeah, we we were able to do a breakout room. The clients actually came into the uh, to the event. Some of them uh, came in because they just up uh, they just they just joined us from the March event, so they got a free ticket to this yes. event. Uh, yep. The other ones, uh, because they've been with us, some of our legacy clients, they got in. Then some of the clients just decided to pay for it. They just actually just they didn't even wait. They just paid to come in. But uh, what we end up doing is in the event, we actually had a client breakout session where we already had clients that was right at the, the tail end of their of their uh, time with us. So they decided a lot of them, a couple of them decided to just go ahead and upgrade at the event. Then we had some of them upgrade about two or three weeks later uh, during the month of uh, July. 
but mm -hmm. but but we just gave a, a, a just a stupid offer and we only had one of them that took the the uh, payment method offer everybody mm -hmm. else took the full pay uh same thing with the uh with, with the new clients they most of them all took just a full pay because it was just a just a ridiculous offer how we how we set it up so that's why you see a, only a ten thousand dollar difference between revenue and cash collected so, right right mm -hmm. Which yeah, and that's where we, Kate, Kate and I kind of took the word acquisition and, and ascension and, and kind of merged it together. And we call it acquisition because at these events, you can do both. And, and to your point, it can be a little tricky. There's, there's, you know, logistically, how do you pull it off? But we've worked with some clients where they're actually pulling off three different offers at the same event. You know, taking their $7,500 people and getting them up to the 20K offer getting the 20K off for people to renew and getting the people that have never bought anything to buy the 7,500. So there's a way to pull it off. And you guys did it great. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm excited for for you guys is when that that 20 or 25K back end and ascending your current people into that program. So what talk about, was it anything different than you shared earlier? Um, you talked about the positioning and the bonuses. What was specifically done that you and Kate worked through that led to that like 90% cash collected rate? What was the positioning you're talking about there? I think a lot of it was mindset. There was many times we got on that coaching call on Monday and we were like, we were the biggest enemies. Like, cause our, our brain was just like, no, you can't do that. No, that's too much. <laughs> and, uh, and if you heard the numbers earlier, which was 174,000 in revenue and 164 cash collected. Mm -hmm. One thing that Kate and Andrew have really helped us with is getting more cash collected. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a, a game changer in uh, really creating these type of payment plans and fast action bonuses to where people would lean more towards the full pay versus ex extending like two to three different payments. And not only that, you guys also helped us with like funding partners too as well. Okay. That is really going to be a game changer moving forward. So I, I would say that that's that right there uh, it's something that we're really excited about because we're just implementing that strategy now and we're seeing just a really bright future for us <laughs> in using that type of model, especially, uh, uh, you know, just, you know, wrapping up these events and just having a way for people to get started because there's so many people that want to jump in with us. They want to do a full pay and they just can't do it. They're just yeah, not yeah. financially able, but, you coming in and then giving us other resources uh, to funding is, is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. When the client, when the client can feel like it's a payment plan, but you feel like it's a full pay, I mean, everybody's happy there. Right. Yeah. Just, in, and just curious for you two guys as business owners, how do you feel as a business owner when you've got 160,000 cash collected in the bank? Like, what does that do for you? Like with your, like certainty as a business owner, your marketing, like what does that do going into August? Because uh, that's, that changes how you feel as a business owner. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking to go to Cancun and uh, fly on <laughs> these planes where you can actually lay down <laughs> like our coaches do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's so good, man. Let me just tell y'all something. Um, I was in corporate America working at, you know, corporate for about 16 years, HR, you know, nature HR director didn't see myself doing anything else but, but that. And I left my job, y'all, in uh, June of 2020 mm. and just went out on a deep end. I got four kids that stay at the house. My oldest was in, in the Army. So I have five total. I know I don't look like it. Thank you all for saying that. <laughs> so <laughs> We were all thinking it. Y'all were all thinking, all thinking it. it. Y'all like, what in the world? Wow. All right. So, <laughs> now that we got that one out the way, right? So. But I, but when I jumped off, y'all, I always thought about me and my my youngest daughter Zoe under the bridge begging for money. Like that's where your mind goes. It goes mm -hmm. to the, the the sheer negative. And then I remember the day, and I, and that's why that picture. Like if you go to my profile, you'll see that picture at the top pin to the point to the top of the profile. You see me and Zoe holding that million dollar group award. Mm -hmm. And and I and I'll just tell y'all this is where my mind was playing tricks on me, kind of like old ghetto boys song back in the day. If y'all from the south, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> um. God had another plan. Like it was my mind was saying, hey, Corey and Zoe are going to be under the bridge. God had a plan to say, Corey and Zoe are going to be taking a picture holding this million dollar group award. Mm -hmm. So like if you look at that, like that, that's where I say, OK, man, I used to make one hundred and forty five thousand as a salary. 
And then our business is pulling in 160, so, uh, 164,000 in a 35 dollar, 35-day period. Right. Well, I'll just tell you, like, we can give more, we can do more. Like, you know, I went to Destin not to uh, last week, not to worry about it. You know, this week, you know, we bought two vehicles, <laughs> two brand new vehicles. because <laughs> um, I was able to give one, I had to give one to my 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 son, uh, because he's gonna start going to college. So it prompted me to have to buy another vehicle. The other vehicle was giving us problems. So we had to trade that in and, and got two brand new 2022 and a 2023 vehicle. Uh, so like it's those little small things. I, you know, I know. And, and it's, the money is very, very great. And yeah, you can do a lot of great things with it. But when you can say, hey, I got the peace of mind that I don't have to like show up and, 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 and claw my way in the corporate world anymore. Mm-hmm. That's the most important thing right now for me. Because, you know, I can travel with my, my kids, go pick them up from school, watch all their games at this point. Mm-hmm. Freedom. I mean, it sounds like, and Tuan, I want to hear your thoughts too, but like, yeah, you, there's freedom there, man. Especially, I, I was in corporate America. I was at work for a recruiting company. So I was one of those crazy people cold calling you back in the day. Um, <laughs> but I think the freedom, like I remember for Kate and I, when we started hosting events up until that point, we had a revenue coming in, but we didn't feel free yet. Mm. And in the events, when one thing we haven't mentioned a ton about yet, which is the impact we had on our people at these events was insane. Uh, the relationship, the bond, the, just the, the loyalty built both ways, us as their, their, their mentor and them as a client, but the, the cash injection just changed our life from a freedom standpoint, completely mm-hmm. changed. Up until that point, we kind of felt like we had like a purpose-driven prison and not really like, wow. you know, like we just felt like we actually created something that was less freedom than we had before. And, and events for us completely changed that. So Tuan, how about for you, man, just coming off that month, like how are you feeling as a business owner? What has it done for you? I don't know. I think it's still kind of surreal for me, to be honest with you. I mean, mm-hmm. three and a half years ago, I just got out of prison for some of you that don't know my story. So I tell people I was always in high ticket sales. They just sold the wrong products and then <laughs> figured out that you can make a lot of money with coaching and just, you know, teaching people social media sales and marketing. Uh, so this was fairly new to me, just coming out of prison with only a GED and now just tapping into the online space. I'm very fortunate that I got to meet Corey at my local church and we had a, a, a lot of connections there. I don't have kids. I'm pursuing marriage right now. So I'm in a relationship but I think for me, uh, w- what it really means for me now is just an opportunity just to give back. Now uh, I'm able to go back into prisons right now and, and I teach entrepreneurship, you know. Oh, nice. And it's just a big part of my story now of, you know, going through prison and allowing God to develop me. And here I am. Now I can say that we've grown a seven figure coaching business and it's only the beginning. But I remember hearing something this past week from a a pastor named Craig Rochelle, and he's speaking about if you really want to grow in consistency, you have to have a strong why. Mm -hmm. And I thought I started thinking about how many coaches that I talk to on a daily basis that say, you know what, I want to make 10K months. I want to grow a six figure to six figure coaching business. But that's not really a why. Mm. And it made me think, why is it so many people that I talk to say this? but are not willing to do what it takes. And I asked myself, wait, what is my why? Mm. And my why was simple. My why was I wanted to create generational wealth and create a legacy for generations and break my family from this poverty mindset. Mm. And so when I actually started evaluating that, I was like, oh my gosh, like there's so much more in what drives me. Because when you find your why, you will find the way. Like Mm -hmm. whatever it is, if you don't have enough money, you're going to find a way because your why is so strong. And I just thought I'd share that with you because, because someone needs to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You're hundred percent right, man. hundred percent. Kate, before we wrap up, any other questions for these guys? Mm -hmm. You You know, the one thing I would say um, before I ask these guys a question is that if any of you, as you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, if you're thinking to yourself, because I know with you guys, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to do events and it's going to be great and we're going to consistently do them and we're going to strategically do them. Like it's a it's an interesting mind game that it plays because I think that there's a lot of people out there that think it's not possible for them when it is like and the crazy part is 
you guys were up to, you know, 600, 700,000, like hitting a million. And then you started to strategically, you know, add events into your model. Um, for us, it was like 300 K maybe in revenue. And then we did one. So it's like, for a lot of people, you're there without realizing you're there. And so if you're curious about how it might work for you, how it might work for your business, or maybe it'll be your main vehicle of driving revenue and profitability for yourself, just drop go in the comments and we'll make sure that we get connected with you so we can talk more here about your business and see if it's something that might be a fit for you. Um, so I want to pop that in there before we hop into, you know, parting words, last, last questions the good stuff. Yeah. Well, I was actually just going to say what's interesting is you guys, you mentioned webinars. So you previously had done webinars before you did an event, correct? So correct. for us, that's actually, so for anybody who's watching this, like, oh, I'm not ready for an event yet. We consider a webinar an event. Mm-hmm. It's just, you got a 90 minute event. You've got a couple of day event. You've got them virtually, you got them live. Right. And so that might be the entry point. You know, the entry point for us, Kate and I, was actually the same thing. We first started doing webinars, what we just call events. Like, they're all events. They're just different lengths, and they're either a virtual or they're live. So if you are under, like, 10K a month in your your business right now, we'd recommend that you talk to our team about starting with what we call a pop-up event, which is simply a webinar. And we have a certain way that we do it, a certain structure in which we do it. And all of those principles then roll into doing like a three-day virtual event or a three-day live event. So I know that's how we learned. We learned how to, you know, how to pitch and close and sell that way. And then once we kind of got our our teeth, you know, cut our teeth there, we did our first live event. So I guess to wrap things up here, a couple of things I took away from this conversation. One is virtual event. I love what you guys did around, it was a free ticket. And then it was a VIP ticket, right? You guys found that through testing, that was the best move is to do a free ticket and then sell a VIP ticket upsell Mm -hmm. Um, because the free ticket obviously removed some resistance of people just joining the event and you get more eyeballs on the VIP, you get more eyeballs onto your your event in general. Um, Another thing I took away, it was just the conversation you guys talked about how to position the offer. And what's interesting is that is... That is universal. Whether you're doing a webinar, a VSL, a handwritten Launch, sales letter, Facebook group, yeah. yeah, any type of promotion, offer positioning, offer messaging is one of the most crucial, critical things you guys can actually do. So if you're out there and you want help with that, comment below, go, we can help you with that. That's a big part of what we support our clients on. And then also um, the, the reality that inside of these events, you guys were positioning multiple things an opportunity for your current clients and an opportunity for, you know, acquiring brand new clients outside of those, those, and there was a lot more inside of this. I'm not going to recap the whole thing outside of that, Corey and Twan, anything else you want to share as kind of parting shots or parting thoughts before we go? I would say, uh, I would say, and this, this kind of sounds, it sounds like a paradox, but plan to fail. What I mean by that is, Mm -hmm. It was never perfect every single time we did it. So happy you brought that up. Yeah. Um, the first time, I mean, even when 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 we did two pitches, like a pitch and then a repitch, like <laughs> is that too salesy? We've never done that before. Like, how's that gonna work out? And I gotta tell you, if you don't have a coach that can kind of guide you through the strategies, you're not gonna really achieve the goals. All right. Um, so when I say plan to fail is it might not be perfect the first time, but through that process, I got to say now we are so confident in the virtual events model now. And then now leading into us doing the live event you know, next year, like I can say that we have a hundred percent, hundred percent confidence that we can probably pull in like two to 300, maybe 400,000 with the strategies now versus mm-hmm. when we first started and we were just very timid and we didn't know if this was going to work. And so we just did it over and over. And now it's like, yeah, it works. Yeah. The first one's just the starting point, you know, and that's, that's where it's like hard as a that's marketer because we're sometimes we're so impatient, but that first one's just the starting point. Right. And you guys just continued to do it. You've done three now and we all, we all know what four is going to look like. Four is going to be insane. <laughs> um, you got the financing, you guys got a lot of things dialed in. So no, that's a great point, Tuan. Corey, how about for you? No, I'll just echo what Tuan said. I mean, the you know, biggest biggest game changer was being able to just talk things out uh, when we when our mind was stumbling, you know, because even at 
what we found in our in, in this is you're gonna have imposter syndrome at all levels. Like mm-hmm. when we first started the journey, we had a, a goal to do a hundred thousand dollars. We did that in 83 days using our system, and then we had imposter syndrome. We got our million dollar award, and then we all of a sudden we came back from the from the big event and we were like, man, can we do it again? Is anybody else gonna buy our program? Right. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 throughout that process, what I really what you really, really need is someone to like talk it out. And let you let you know, like, hey, is there, everything's gonna be okay. You know, keep it going, and 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 that's one of the things that that we kind of held on to throughout that whole process, is knowing like everything's gonna be okay. Like we're we're you know we've gotten everything ready. Like when we went when we went through it, the virtual event was very very smooth. It was the smoothest event we've done, um, and you know we all the transitions was great. We even had like Jim Edwards come in. He he did his part, and then. You know, we transitioned to us and it was just so, so great. And and um, and the cool thing is, like even Jim Edwards, we're going to be with him this week and, you know, he's, we're going to do another another thing with him. So nice, uh, nice. and it's just and that's because, you know, we were at events. We met him at an event and then all of a sudden he was at our event. And then, we, you know, so so you never know what you're going to get coming out of the event. And but what we what we do know as a company, we grow, we grew as a company. Uh, we found a, a, another methodology that that uh, we're going to be using within our Facebook group model now, um, and we're going to keep keep launching these things. We can't and we can't wait till our live event happens. You know, we know the, the magic really going to happen in a live event, but uh, but until then, I mean, we're 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 going to be you know just we're going to stay excited uh, for for that event, but we'll continue to grow in revenue. We'll continue to grow our business, and that's that's the most important piece because we're helping a lot of clients right now. So yeah, really love it. Yeah, you guys are making a massive, massive impact, incredible impact on the market, on a lot of people's lives. So just happy for you guys. Um, Happy that you worked through, like you said, Tuan, that it's not going to be perfect. Um, Mm -hmm. But because here's the thing, like lead generation strategies come and go. Kate and I have been around this for over 10 years. Lead generation strategies come and go. But all those 10 years, you know what has been around? Events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've been around the whole time, just in different forms, whether it's live whether it's webinars, whether it's virtual, whether it's a hybrid, they've been around the whole time and long before we were involved in this industry because there's nothing better at building trust inside of that experience like a live event, nothing. And you guys, I'm just happy for you. You guys are at this point, in my opinion, just scratching the surface of what this is going to be. Oh yeah, you're going to blow it up. It's going to be fun. (laughs) Yeah, so I really appreciate you guys coming on today and just sharing a little of your story with, with our group here. Um, if you are watching this, whether it's live or on replay, and you want to implement what Corey and Tuan have done, implementing live events or virtual events, or like we said, just starting with a webinar, what we just call it, it's an event. That's all it is. You want to learn more about that? Just comment, go in the comments below and we'll have someone on our team get in touch with you. Um, but that is it for me. Can anything else for you? I just wanted to share um, my appreciation for both of you and just how pumped I am for you both and for the team, because I know that it's not just the two of you. You've got a team that's behind you. That's a a badass team. Um, And there's a difference between when you put on an event, you're making a commitment and you're making a commitment to ride the roller coaster and you oftentimes don't feel like you have control of the roller coaster it is controlling you and you guys leaned in um and it's just been an awesome experience to watch you guys grow to watch you guys just like spread love to your people and you can i mean numbers reflect the impact and the appreciation and the relationship that you have with your people. So those numbers are coming because of truly who the two of you are and how you show up for your people and the impact that you're making. So I'm just so proud of you guys. I know that this is just the beginning. Like we said, they're going to be doing an event in early 2023 that's live. So it's like, that's going to be a whole nother awesome experience for you guys. Um, but just pumped for you guys, proud of you guys, and just appreciate you for being here to, you know, share some wisdom for people that are hopping into this group and wanting to know more about, you know, how to do this thing. So just really appreciate you guys. Love Thank it. you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank y'all. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Live event is uh, the video has ended. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Absolutely. All right. Y'all. Appreciate guys. y'all.